Welcome back to The Sacred Life. I'm Shan Vanderleek, and today I'll be talking with Shamali Gad Arda, founder of Awakening Women and the Women's Wisdom School. And this goddess shines. I have had the pleasure of knowing Shamali for a few years now and have been a participant in several of her offerings. And boy, I'll tell you what, if this is your first time meeting her, you are in for a treat. She's amazing. She is a storyteller and a women's wisdom keeper and her love of ancient wisdom teachings and her own practice in women's circles all over the world has crystallized maps of spiritual awakening and leadership that are accessible, practical, and honoring of women today. Rooted in earth honoring, devotional women's spirituality and goddess-centered tantric yoga, she's especially appreciated for her love of mythology and storytelling as a key to spiritual awakening and embodiment. And she is a great storyteller, so maybe we'll get her to jump into story today, I'm sure. Welcome to This Sacred Life, Shamali. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, we always have such good conversations. I'm looking forward to see what will uh, reveal itself today. Me too. And, and again, thank you for your time. And it's been a few years since we last had a, a conversation in this way. And I thought, oh, I would love to speak with you about... Anana's descent and about your upcoming sadhana and how all of this relates to what we're in right now on this earth. And you say the, ryth the rhythms of death and rebirth are as ancient as the cosmos itself. But when we lose connection with this wider context and full memory and meaning, the times of dismantling and dissolution can feel like an end point. And I know for many, that's how it feels instead of a phase in a process that can initiate us and weave us back into the wisdom of the deep, which is where we are, whether we like it or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What I find in these uh, ancient myths is somehow a framework, a context of meaning where we can see that although the situations we are seeing today are, are unique to this time, that the patterns of how they are arising and dissolving and transforming are somehow archetypal and timeless as well. You can see in these myths that we have gone through the, the valleys and the peaks and the, the battles between, between darkness and light since the beginning of time. And particularly times of a crisis or dismantling, disorientation mm -hmm. and loss, in our society, uh, because, you know, because of the kind of structures of values we have chosen for our society and modern Western society, um, we see that we have, we value quick fixes, we value productivity, we value money, <laughs> basically, and the human, uh, human process has to kind of fit into to those systems of values. And what we have lost is room for the darker, slower, less clear times, the times of, um, of transformation, of loss of the known and un familiar, uh, the times of, of, of leaving the shore of the known, but have, before we have reached something new, uh, we have very li little patience, trust, confidence in those realms so we skip them we try to get back to normal or right. figure out the solution right away right and what these myths tells us that in the water in between there is valuable wisdom there is medicine uh, that is actually what weaves us back into these ancient rhythms that that moves all things so although Death can, f of course, be an experience painful and, and, and frightening and, and uh, unbearable sometimes. Nevertheless, in the, in the meeting of death, we are, we are in a meeting that is so universal. It's something everything here face. And in that, there is a sense of belonging and meaning even when it's painful and in skipping that you know when we go straight to the solution and fix and back to normal um in the same way we are losing our belonging yeah right. we can 
it can seem like that is successful and happy, but nevertheless, it's this nagging underlying feeling of longing for home. <laughs> we have lost home. Yes. In, in the world. And, and the heaviness that can come with that and, and you know such a difference between grounded and heaviness and what we're carrying or what we're trying to push away and not carry that difference between allowing yourself to surrender into the ocean to surrender into what is and to feel like we have to constantly be taking action to make something happen and not to say that that action isn't good action is ju just fine as long as you're also allowing for surrender and those two, I find, at least in my life right now, are really playing a bit of a, of a tug of war because I tend to want to make things happen <laughs> when oftentimes I really need to settle in and pray and surrender and sit and let what comes up come up so that I can deal with it as it does versus, as you were talking about earlier, ignoring it or trying to push it aside or trying to tell myself that if I just, you know, click my heels three times, I'll be back into some place of some normal feeling environment, which really is, uh, was, was never the truth anyway. Yeah. And it's beautiful. I just want to highlight some of, the, so, some of what you said was that we think we have to make things happen and we oftentimes view surrender as opposite to that. But like what you describe is that you surrender to, to allow something, a deeper rhythm happen. Yeah. So when you surrender, it's not actually to something passive. We are surrendering to a deeper rhythm that moves the planet, that moves all things all the time. Mm -hmm. And we are made of it, we are part of it. And we can draw upon that deeper support that is available to us, that we cheat ourselves yes. um, in, in, in making it happen all the time. We sure do. Let's talk a little bit about Inanna. I suspect that most of our listeners uh, know a little bit of the story or have a, an idea, but let's pretend that they don't uh, mm -hmm. so that you can introduce her and then we can carry on our conversation and how uh, she is incredibly relevant to uh, this experience right now on earth. Yes. So when we look at, when we look at the, more hunter-gathering cultures, um, indigenous cultures, and even our, you know, our own, many of us, more Caucasian, our lineages, brings us back, not so far back in time, to a structure in our society where we had rites of passages for, for different times in our lives. Yes. And oftentimes the first rise of passage is from, from childhood to, to adulthood or to, to adolescence. And uh, those rites of passages oftentimes entails a, somehow a reenactment or a, a process where you go through losing the known, hovering in that waters of the unknown, and go through the kind of real transformational process of dismantling and dissolution before something new can happen and in that you kind of get that imprint of that oh i can trust this process when life throws us into those yes which will and many of us we don't have that yeah so uh so for me the the story the poem about inanna a Sumerian goddess and her voluntarily going down into the underworld, um, completely letting go of all her identity, even eventually go, letting go of her body for so to rise again. Three days later, we can recognize this from another. Right. Um, it gives us that rites of passage. It gives, gives us that framework that we can bring with us, um, you know, when life, when it's not voluntarily. So the story is that, you know, she is a, a glorious goddess. She's very successful. She's very, uh, uh, she's called the queen of the heaven and earth. 
uh, she has mm -hmm. things going for her. She is, you know, fertility. She is love. She is war. She's involved in so she's like a great goddess. And nevertheless, she begins to hear the call from below. It says in the beginning of the poem that she lays her ear to the ground and listen from the bowl, from earth, from even deeper than earth. And she hears the call to go down into the dark, into the unknown. Yes. Down in the underworld, she has a sister. And here we see these kind of couples that we see a lot in mythology, yeah. uh, which kind of brings our pol polarized mind into union. Because here we have the glorious goddess of the heavens and the light and the brightness. And her sister is the goddess and ruler of the underworld, of the dark, of, of that uh, less easy to define, mm -hmm. those deeper processes. Inanna, she goes down and she goes down through seven gates. And each gate she's asked to sacrifice everything that has identified her as goddess and as woman, as anything. Right. The role that she has played. She has to lay down. So eventually she, she meets her dark sister stripped naked. And her dark sister kills her body and put her on a meat hook where she, this glorious goddess is now rotten. And she hangs there for three days until a rescue mission is sent from above. And through some processes of actually facing the dark sister and allowing the dark sister to express her pain, to express all that in the hidden, in, you know, in the hidden corners, in the hidden closets, all of it is, is received and witnessed. And in that, there is a healing and Inanna is allowed to uh, rise up again. For many of us, we go through crisis with not only our experiences of, of the loss or the challenges that we are in, but also on top of that, we have these judgments of the process. That oh, yes. Exactly. We don't have a framework to, to hold this because when we go down, and oftentimes this is not voluntarily, um, in our sadhana, we do it consciously. Yeah. We need to, 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 to throw out the breadcrumbs for ourselves so that we know the way when life throws this at us. You know, everyone will experience to lose someone. Or sure. Well, and these losing even losing you know different life phases is, is oh hard. yeah and that's you know, right right now i'm in, in the process of of doing some work with my teacher uh, as i transition from mother to matriarch uh, because in in our in our circles and, and beliefs that we don't go right to crone um, we we get to be sovereign first and uh, i just finished my my last cl classes and i'm now planning the initiation that I have at the end of this month. My daughter just moved away one week ago today. And, uh, and so I have this empty nest and I knew that I needed to start this process last winter uh, to, to start the cord cutting, to start doing the work, to, uh, to, to make sure that uh, I could be as ready as possible and as supported as possible through this significant change. And I give so much thanks and gratitude to that knowing that that's exactly what I need. And, and so for the work that you do and the offerings that, that you often make available through these 21 day sadhanas, it's, I mean, it's, could it, could it be any more perfect? Could the, could a Nana story look at the parallels between what's happening in the world right now I mean, the world is <laughs> is down the seven gates you know mm -hmm. yes absolutely absolutely and and i think that because it's so 
big what's happening in the world. And for many of us, including myself, we I have to work hard to, it drops deeper every day. Like sometimes yeah. I have this aha moment. It's like, oh, oh, you know, that is gone. Oh, we have lost that. Oh. Uh, but just the example that you were mentioning, I think that is because that is so close for many, is that when we, that incredible shift when the children move out because it's been your focus for so many so years. So long. And it becomes an identity, whether you mm -hmm. like it or not. It becomes a role, yeah? And oftentimes we identify with, you know, we, we get enmeshed with this, these roles so that when we lose the role, it is a, it is a period of, like, oh, oh my, who am I now? Yeah. Who am I? And in that, there's that temptation of just filling it with something else. Um, and I just love how you model, or you can really enter that consciously because in, in the mythology and in all the, the kind of spiritual map, we see that that is a, when it's a rift in the, in the thickness of our identity, there is a possible, there's a yogic portal. Mm -hmm. that, because in that not knowing who you are, there's a recognition that you are still here, even if this role falls away. Even if I'm not a mother, you are still a mother, but you're not right. in the mothering phase. Yeah, you're not in the nurturer. Right. Um, so many go through a divorce. But who are you if you're not a wife? Who are you if you are not um, athletic? Yeah, if your body gets ill. Uh, who are you if you are not this doing this job? Many of us we. I, identify with these things when we lose them it feels like dying it feels yeah like a death and right. in these myths we see that yes it is but only in that death you can actually know eternal life only that you can know the eternal spirit that that is not you know it's not defined by these roles it plays them throughout right. life but they will never go away even if the roles go away so that's where it is that initiation to spiritual awakening sure. and the times we are in right now uh you know that's where it really is in our face that opportunity but it's 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 not easy <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well okay. and i and you know the the judgment piece that you brought up earlier uh, i am on full alert right now with my judgment shamali it i mean it's just like okay <laughs> What else can you judge today? When you're judging that, you're judging yourself, and you're and and these I, and then at least I can find some humor in it. But uh, wow, quite quite powerful the the opinions that I have about things and and how they ought to be or uh, you know from from my space and place. And then I just have a good laugh and and then start again, uh, trying not to judge, trying to allow what is happening to happen, to be uh, available and supportive and community-minded to the best that I can, to continue to learn more about uh, the, the systemic racism that, I, you know, here I am, blonde-haired, blue-eyed, white woman, and, you know, so much that I was clueless about and still have to learn. Uh, and, so, and not so much judgment about that as understanding that there's so much more to do and learn. And, and I'm grateful for that. Yes. And I'm glad you put that, you bring that up because the anti-racism work is one of those things that we can, you, know, you can look at lift different layers. You know, there's the social justice layers where there's action needed. Right. There is inner work needed uh, to look at our biases and beliefs. Uh, there's personal level work. And there's also, you know, bringing it into this context, this is deep spiritual work because in, 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 in the same way as any identity and role can be so all encompassing. It's like we don't see it anymore. Yeah, we yeah, yeah. that identity and we say, this is me and this is reality. Even if I look through this lens, I don't see the lens. I just see this is reality. Right. Um, and the whiteness, like the white center, the white dominance in the world, something most of us, have, you know, don't see. Yeah. Um, 
And of course, there are people of color that keep that not giving up on us, that are keep telling us this is your behavior is harmful. Yeah. And of course, for us uh, that have some spiritual tools, of course, our response will not be no. I don't see that. So then it's not <laughs> real. Right. We, we are curious. Yeah. It's like, oh, what is it I don't see? Yeah. And the way what I've discovered in this work is that, you know, it, talk about identity. Um, and it's almost like it's pulling the plug from from the deep, and it's a deep dismantling, not only from beliefs, and but you begin to see that everything I have called normal, yes, is actually, uh, you know, is actually the the white dominance lens. Oh is. yeah, and then and then as it's as it's coming up, um, I'll be I'll be uh, dialing into um, different phrases, different uh, experiences as a youngling and, and growing up and. Um, and being in a in a fairly racist, uh, it, I thought it was only a portion of my family, um, and then <laughs> realized that it, it was so ingrained um, that even though uh, I never would have considered this person or that to be in that particular circle or space, they actually very much are, and how grateful I am to be the part of the lineage that says no more. How can I change this? How can I, how can I change this? Not so much to empathize for our, our people of color, brothers and sisters, but, but for how we change. <laughs> what choices do we make and how do we change uh, to make this a, a better experience? And also the forgiveness piece and, and then knowing it's fine to learn what you know now and not to have known what you didn't know then, but then it's time to take action and it's time to uh, bust yourself every single time something comes up and, and reposition it. And how can I look at this and how does that affect somebody else? And, and obviously we could talk about this on and on and on, but it's just been so in my face as I know it has for yours and so many. Yes. Um, who are who are really wanting to uh, to change and to make things uh, uh, so much better than they've been? Yes, and when we look at Inanna, you know, in her process, laying there completely kind of dismantled, it's not yeah. nothing is comfortable in that period of the process. Um, it seems in that moment that oh everything is destroyed why did i do this like it was great the what way was i thinking you know? it's like everything is destroyed you don't see the way forward because it, it just is really like the caterpillar you know going into a complete mush right uh, before it can become a butterfly right there in that moment it's easy to doubt the process that's easy to also just uh, it's just feels overwhelming but that is where we know also from our spiritual practice it's, it's a similar way like it leads us to it leads us to a reality not based on any beliefs it's it in this context the anti-racist work leads us to our shared humanity yes that has been stolen from all of us in these structures of power and dominance even though i as a white woman benefit from those structure right. my soul is you know, it's uh, harmed by it because yes. it, it's a false structure. It's not, you know, aligned with with who we are. So, and what I have found in this work is that I I am a fighter. So I'm very interested in just the nervous system responses that is like involuntarily when we are going down and into these crises yeah. and we lose things. Then our automatic responses sets in. And it's interesting to, to be, become aware of what is your response when you are threatened or pressured. And become, because the more aware you can become of it, the more creative you can be with these responses and take care of it. Right. So my response, I'm a fighter. I fight. Yeah, you fight, flight, freeze, avoid. You, you, you know, you may recognize. It's not something we choose. Right. So I go in and fight. And what I realize is that the fighting mode is is useful, uh, but not as a chronic state. Yeah, you can't stay in it 
for, for, for a longer period of time without burning out. You're literally, your adrenals, everything's pumping adrenaline and cortisol is not sustainable. So just as when Inanna, she went down into this process, what she did before was that she established a priestess on the surface, Ninshuber. And this priestess, she was to keep guard and she was, she's beating a drum yes. while the goddess goes down. And she, she says that if I'm not back in three days, you, you have to call for help. And this is what Ninshuber does. She's the one who arranges so that Inanna is saved and can, can come up to the surface again. And this Ninshuber aspect is the aspect of our own consciousness. Yes. Uh, she can be symbolized by a therapist or a guide or a teacher or a friend, someone outside us that can hold space for us, that can help us through. But that outer reflection is, is a mirror of an, an, a capacity that we have all of us to stay awake even when we go down into these very difficult places. And so that has, it's just a helpful thing for us to bring with us when, when we go into the fight or we go into the contemplation of these very challenging, rigid identities is to establish a relationship with support, with resource. Yes. Yeah, so we go back and like this is the classic trauma pattern too, uh, right. trauma healing pattern where you you establish resource and then you can go into the dark and then you can have a place to return to like that. And I, I recommend that to have soothing, nourishing practices every day, especially every day. at this time in this crisis because we are in such an alert mode. I agree that the... the um... The work that I do uh, with Anxiety Slayer has been really uh, kicked up to uh, a higher level, as you can imagine, at helping people manage their nervous system, whether it be through breathing exercises or walking meditation or guided meditation, uh, calming points, tapping, whatever it is, whatever works for you, just do it. You know, practice, practice as much as you possibly can. And then, of course, to have a support group whatever that might look like for you. And I know that in, the, in this process right now, that my personal process, as well as what's happening in, in the world, um, the, the gateways that I was working through were perfectly mirroring what was happening at the time it was happening in the, on the bigger stage, which is you know, such magic in itself. And you're like, what? You're like, oh, this is so much, so much bigger than I am. And as it's translating out in, and this work that we do and that, that care and, the, um, and to consciously choose uh, to move through this work. And, and it's just, there's nothing like it. There's, it, you know, it's one of the reasons why you continue to do what you do. I know it is. And why you have this offering coming up, which I want to make sure that you tell everyone about. We've certainly talked about Anana and we've talked about what's going on in the world stage and, and some of our personal processes, but let's, let's also talk about the, the relevance of this offering that you have coming soon that what will guide uh, our listeners through this time, both personally and in the collective. Yes. I just love the way you frame it that, you know, the way that I, I view a spiritual work is that it is an awakening to a sense of self deeper than the different roles and identities we play. And more than ever, in the work that we are facing in the world today, which has to do with racial justice, with financial justice and equality, uh, um, you know, and, and climate change and all these you know, political dramas, all of that um, requires of us to let go of the familiar and that is close to impossible to do if that which is familiar is what you have glued onto and call me so for example um, to face the habits that harms mother earth can be so shameful and so shocking to see that oh even i'm as a conscious woman 
I'm constantly stuffing plastic into earth, you know, no, you know, no matter how hard, hard I try. And it's easy to just go into that numbness and denial because it feels horrible to feel shame, shame. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I see that a lot in our discussions about anti-racism. A lot of women says, I worked so hard to not feel shame. I don't want to feel guilty about this. I didn't do it. I, you know, it's like an offensiveness. And um, what I see is essential for us to bring with us into all of this that we are facing is that realization of a sense of self, uh, rooting ourselves in a sense of self, that is deeper than these identities because then we will not be so attached to them. Yeah. We know that, yes, it could feel like dying with the normal when normal falls away, but I know it's not dying because who I am is, 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 is eternal, is, is bigger yeah. than different roles that come and go. Yeah, so much so for greater. Me, yeah, so for me, spiritual awakening is, is, is interlinked with social justice work, with anti-racism work, with... with uh, environmental work and all the other you know causes that are 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 on our plate right now so i feel passionate about uh inviting uh women and and all that identify as women why we we focus on women is is basically because i have been guiding women's groups my whole my whole life and that there's a specific medicine released in that field the woman's circle is like a is an alive archetype. It's been here since the beginning. So that is, I'm, in my lifetime, that is what I'm curious to extract. Uh, but we also, of course, are um, working, and part of our, one of the dismantling is around how inclusive are we? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and really see, oh, you know, how can we, how can we soften any things that, that becomes a barrier for people to join? But nevertheless, it's a woman's circle. Uh, and um, for 21 days, uh, you practice from home and you get an email, daily email with a, with a poem, with a practice, with a pointer, uh, where we will uh, you know, go through this myth as our map. We will also meet for, our, for Zoom retreats uh, where we will have storytelling and, 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 and practices in the body. Uh, practices that lays hidden in the myth and the, these are kind of popping up from from the from the deep uh, which is the magic of mythology it's not really just the story illustrating um, as an overlap of life the, the mythology is a dimension of life right where we have stored memory where we have stored instructions as uh, something available for all of us to pick up and that's what we're going to do in October. Uh, and this is like, a, you know, we have been doing 21 Day Sadhanas now for I think nine years or more. The, even. the first one that I did, um, and again, it's it's just divine timing. There, there really are no mistakes. Uh, I started, uh, I believe it was October. It was uh, the Kali Sadhana. And um, at the completion, my father died. And all I can tell you is that that experience and the work that we did over those three weeks uh, helped me manage that in, in, a, in a much more graceful way because I had been working with Kali and very deeply working with, with Kali. And so I was... From that experience, I just knew. I was like, okay, well, as these speak to me, um, I, I need to pay attention and and uh, participate <laughs> whenever possible because um, it's actually a, a pretty uh, inexpensive way. I mean, if anybody's thinking about, oh, that's got to be really expensive, it's, it's not. Um, and what you get and what Shamali shares is so much. Uh, there's just so much there. There's uh, over and above overflowing and above and then some you will come away with so very much and this this time is also unique in the sense that um this summer we opened a, a, a woman's wisdom school and with the woman's wisdom school we have a village online village which is basically our own social media platform that we have created it's very very beautiful and serene like a sanctuary for women 
And in this sadhana, whoever wants to join the sadhana gets to um, do the sadhana within the village if they want to, instead of Facebook. It's many feel nice. that Facebook can be distractive and sure. go into all of this scrolling. Um, so this time we have a very thriving Facebook group, uh, but you can also choose to not be on Facebook and do the, do the sadhana. When I say do the sadhana, you do the sadhana at home, but we have all these ways we connect sure. with the other women. Sure. And oh, you can do that in the village this time. Yeah. <laughs> well, I want to thank you so much for making yourself available today for this conversation and for the offerings and, and the continued creative work and just the, the myriad of ways that you show up and, and help so many through your storytelling and support and your spiritual practice and on and on and on. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you. So you can visit awakeningwoman.com to learn more about the upcoming Ananas Journey Sadhana. And for 21 days, you can follow the ancient poem, Ananas Descent, to the underworld as you map through times of loss and transformation. Shamali is a gracious host and you are gonna absolutely love this experience if you're available. And again, you can go to awakeningwomen.com to learn more.